Coming from Sweden, which we see in, in England, certainly as a kind of liberal country, he didn't necessarily see it that way. And his picture of Sweden is, is a very dark one, certainly in terms of government organizations and secret organizations. They concerned him. The position of women in society concerned him to a great degree as well. And he had a strangely, it would seem from the books, a strangely ambivalent attitude to his own sex. So men behave very badly in the books, most men, with a few exceptions. The exceptions are the ones which one feels are Stig Larsson himself. So there are kind of idealized versions of himself in the book. Mikhail Blomqvist, his hero, is kind of a, an idealized version of himself, the way that James Bond was an idealized version of Ian Fleming. It would have been nice to think that he was the victim, and when I say nice, I mean interesting, dramatically apposite that he had died because of one of these nasty, people, nasty groups he dealt with. The truth is he was a journalist and he had a journalist's lifestyle. We don't look after ourselves. Um, he certainly was a chain smoker, uh, consumed a massive amount of junk food, simply did not look after himself. And it was an interesting refrain I found from the various people I spoke to of how there was a slight annoyance at the fact that he hadn't looked after himself, that he'd squandered his, he'd squandered his health and was dead at 50. That's part of his legend. I'm not sure the books would be as successful as they are if he was still alive. It is the first biography, it's coming out in April. There are several books in the wings. Eva Gabrielson may be doing a book. There is a book by a journalist colleague of, of Larson's called My, My Friend Stieg. There will be a lot of books, I think a lot of books, and there will be analyses of why the books are successful. So I've tried to do both in the book. I've tried to talk about the life, but I think the books also are very autobiographical. And if you know something about him, you start to see all those references and you think, ah, yes, that's where he drew that from, that's where he brought that from. He'll change things, but those, actually, if you read the Millennium Trilogy, you're reading Stieg Larsson's autobiography.